right. We're not on mute. I'm just trying to get this crazy camera to work this week. This is Jenny, and I am delighted to be back with you this Wednesday at 1. Okay. So, first time, many times, I'm Jen. I am part of the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art creative crew here in Bedford, Pennsylvania. And I am coming to you live on Facebook from the studio at my house in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Um, my mom hates it when I say um, so now I feel bad. Hi, mom. <laughs> what we're going to work on today is actually kind of a reverse of what we've done in the last couple weeks. We're going to combine it. I'm going to show you, we're going to play a little bit with watercolors, and then we're going to bring out the markers. So, like last week, we did, let me grab last week, last week we did a drawing of a potted plant. So the first thing we did, <gasps> sorry, I just ran into the table. So the, so the first thing we did was draw the picture with the marker, and then we put the watercolors on. Today, we're going to do a little bit in honor of Earth Day by getting inspired by our amazing planet and then we're gonna really keep a nice simple fun project for our pandemic playtime I think you're gonna enjoy it so instead of something like this we're gonna do something more like this so you can see there's watercolor beautiful pretty colors and then I went over the edges with a marker I know our buddy Jess over in Loretto has been doing this with Zentangle. It's a very official type of doodling, which is completely fun and awesome. She's online today, too. You can ask questions about that if you want as well. I call this unofficial. This is one of my favorites that came out. I just did some blues and greens, and then I just started tracing the edges. So... Let me take a step back here for a minute and say we're going to be inspired. We see that word inspired a lot, right? I thought, let me break out one of my, I don't know if some of you kids may not recognize this. This is a dictionary. <laughs> I flip and love dictionaries. I love, especially old vintage ones. Um, and I, I buy them at antique shops and flea markets and stuff so that I can rip them apart and use them in, um, Collages. But I thought, let me look this up. Inspiration. A breathing in. Drawing of air into the lungs. Inhaling, opposed to expiration. An inspiring or being inspired mentally or emotionally. An inspiring influence. Any stimulus to create thought or action. An inspired idea, action, etc. A prompting of something written or said. A suggestion. How about that? So I think that fits. So what I want us to do is think about being inspired by our planet. Now, this is an art museum. It's apolitical. But I got to tell you, I love me some nature. And I try to do my part in not polluting. And I think everybody tries to do their part in not polluting. But I think it might be worth a little bit of time today to take a look around outside. Whether it's rainy or windy, whatever in your part of the world. And get inspired. Here are a couple of things you can think about. Here, look at this. Yeah, I know. It's probably not very Earth Day-ish to go out and cut flowers. But look at this gorgeous daffodil. And it's made it through all kinds of frost this week. Pretty amazing. Put her over there. My favorite, though, is this uh, dogwood. It's right outside my living room window. I spend a lot of time on my couch. Okay, it, it just is what it is. And this gorgeous dogwood blooms every April. And there's all kinds of little finches in it. I have a birdhouse out there, so, or a feeder, so the cats lose their mind on this. Anyway, so this, I thought these were really pretty pinks that might be inspiring. Then I, while I was in looking for the vintage dictionary, I found this really cool block printing book. It's published by Walter Foster. 
I don't even know what year it is. But look at these really amazing block prints. These were cut out of linoleum and painted with temper paint. I thought this was just a neat, a neat set of images that can really show the variety of beauty around the planet. So I thought I might draw a little inspiration from them. I especially like this one with the with the snow-covered mountains and the purple lilac sky and the gorgeous fields of flowers. Can you tell I'm ready to go on vacation? <laughs> not that my not that my street here in Bedford isn't oops, I already broke the flower. Isn't amazing, but yeah. And last but not least, I wanted to share um, another vintage grammar school geography, Pennsylvania edition. This is from 1902, so the map may not even be legitimate or real anymore, but you think of just how great wide world our world is, our globe. This is just an old vision of North America, United States. Look, we're right here. Well, this is where I am. I don't know where you are. I got friends all over the world. So maybe I need to flip over to Europe and the Middle East. It's kind of cool. We can do that some other day. Because we got to get to making some mess, right? Whoop, whoop! Okay. So. Since I'm going to assume that you've never met me before. Even though maybe you have. I'm going to do a little bit more of an, a, a talk about the watercolors. What we're doing today it, we just need something washy. Not like washi tape, but like wet. It's going to get the paper a little wet. I'm going to use some leftover watercolor paper. It's pretty smooth. I think it's watercolor paper. I don't know. You can, you can hear it. It's kind of it's poster boardy. Look, it's what we used last week in our lesson. And I'm going to use these hard color watercolors. You can use whatever you would like. Um... I've also, I also found some inks that I thought we might be able to try just for some fun today. These are some Jane Davenport ink, incredible ink, ink, incroyable. Oh, that's me speaking French. En français, si vous play. Um, the tools we need with our water, uh, a washcloth or a blotting towel, right? Fancy. I think this came from Deepwood Gallery, where my friend Julie used to work, or used to own, for that matter. I'm going to use some watercolor brushes. Last time we used some small ones, but this time, since we're going to get a little bit freewheeling, I'm going to kind of do some achromatic or analog analogous colors, kind of all moshed together. So I could probably use a little bigger brush. Look at this nice fatty brush. This is a black velvet jumbo round. Oh my. So for a couple years in November of various years, I've gone to the Art of the Carolinas. Have you ever heard of that? If you haven't looked it up, it's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jerry's Artorama is a big old store of awesome artness run by artists. And they hold this thing in a hotel in Raleigh and my girlfriends and I we get out for the weekend and lose our minds so in addition to amazing art classes this one I took was with uh, Sterling Edwards with a watercolor class you get to shop Jerry's brings every kind, their top 1,000 selling items and puts them in the ballroom oh my lord so Betty it's Betty and Laura who I usually go with and Betty and I drive together and she is in a uh, Prius, and we have that thing stacked to the gills with, I, I don't know, our supplies basically for the next year or whatever, just to add to the hoard because there are such great prices. But that's where a lot of my brushes and markers and things come from. I have gotten questions about that. So <sighs> now I'm thinking about Jerry's and Sterling. Okay, so. Before we start up, let's think about color for just a second. I'm going to break out the color wheel. This is where we're, I, I want to work today. So if I'm thinking of a globe, kind of a typical picture of water and land, I'm going to be thinking about grass, lakes, rivers. I'm going to be working from blue and green. 
So blue will be my, my primary, but I'm gonna use a range of them, maybe even into purple, maybe even into yellow. But when I use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, uh, they're, they're called analogous. Analogous. I could probably write it down, but then you won't be able to read it because the stupid camera will make the letters backwards. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that's where, I, that's where I'm gonna work in. And so I've got my colors in my uh, palette, my watercolor palette, arranged, I like to think, beautifully. So I've got most of the blues here, they get into purple, and then we'll use greens. And you're thinking, well, how can you use such a big brush in a little tiny color thing? Well, you know, I'm gonna mix it over here in my tray, and remember the philosophy with me. We're keeping it simple, sweetie. Nothing is perfect. This stuff is not headed to Paris at, in an expo. Well, maybe it is, I don't know you. But I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional. We're just here to have some fun and it might make a little mess. So, let's get some brushing on. Remember, we're not even worried about the markers right now. We just wanna make some design. And we're gonna call it abstract. You know what abstract means? Not realistic, how about that? Look at that. I'm just slapping some paint on here. some ocean, get some land, let's do some splattering. Remember when I splatter, I like to put my finger out and then put the brush on top and dab it as opposed to trying to, you could whip it. That gives you a little bit of a different, a whip. And uh, watch me, nay, nay. Can you see that? It makes a little bit of a, more of a whiplash. All right, let's see. I really like this earthy green. I'm going to blend that in. So Kim, I see you're out there. Did you get your watercolors out today? Are you working? Is this your lunch time? Should I be watching this comments? See, my Aunt Sarah is here. My crazy Aunt Sarah. Guess guess where my craziness came from. Mm, yep, the hind side. That's my mom's side. I think I need some more blue. Oh, I like that dark blue. Little splatty splat. Does this look earthy? Global. This is one of my favorite colors. Look at that. I think it's called some sort of mermaid, turquoise, yum yums. I don't even know how you say it. It looks kind of like one of those Rorschachs, right? Where you would just think, what? What does it look like to you? Well, I don't care if it looks like anything, but we can even let some of it run. <gasps> oh my gosh, you ran! Guess what? That's okay. I'm going to use a smaller brush here for a minute. Put some different colors in here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <gasps> Look at that midnighty. All right, in terms of design here, um, yeah, you can see we're really, we're really persnickety about that. But I kept mine kind of dork towards the middle. And I've also, I don't know, I guess sort of tried to make a little green and blue here, a little green and blue here, and a little green and blue here, so that it looks balanced to me. I mean, I'm not trying to get all into design and aesthetics of balance and all that stuff. Although those things do exist in life, believe it or not, this whole class is on. What I'm just trying to do is make something pretty, 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 pretty. But also, I will say, and you professionals out there, you know, feel free to chime in. 
But one of the easiest ways to kind of balance our composition, a composition is like the whole looking thing, is the rule of thirds. This, there is way more to it. I mean, I don't even want to get into all the technical stuff. But if you think of, I'm going to digress for a second. Let's let this dry for a minute. If you think of a piece of work as a, as a whole, I'm just going to use the back of this, and you think of it in thirds. Again, this is extremely basic. There's a lot more to composition. I just thought, oh, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to divide it in thirds this way. That's rough, I guess. And then I'm going to divide it in thirds this way. Yes, I just created a giant tic-tac board. However, what's interesting is that you'll find in a lot of design work that the, the eye is drawn to these points. So oftentimes, you're going to want to see your main focal point in one of these points. Sorry, I keep leaning over. I just got to look at my computer. So when you're doing things in thirds, you may, you may want to think of arranging your composition in thirds. I probably should have pulled out some examples, but I just now decided to do that. So you'll see that I'm making the thirds of this composition you know, relatively similar. And that helps achieve a little bit of balance. Now, if I put a whole bunch of black on one side, it would probably look a little weird. Unless that was my focal point and that's what I wanted. But for today, we're just going for a nice even thirds. So we gotta let this baby dry before we start going over it with magic markers. So, how long have we been at this? 18 minutes? And we did something already this cool? Let's do another one. I'm gonna do one inspired by my dogwoods. How about that? And then we're gonna come back to our Earth Day one. We just need to let it dry a little bit. Because if I start going over it with a magic marker, I'm going to be pissed off or ticked off. Sorry, didn't mean for the bad word. Um, and so are you. So, let's think about the dogwoods. Dogwoody. Oh, it's so pretty. Mm. Do you know how hard it is to make a right pink? I tried to paint a picture of some cherry blossoms this week. And I about lost my mind. The main colors we're going to use here, right, are pink, maybe a little bit. There's kind of an orangey pink. Splatter. Uh-oh. Is it okay if I splatter the plant? Yes, it is. Okay, so the other painting we were doing was analogous. It was all blues and greens. This one we're going to use, you see, on the petals of the flower. Lost my color wheel. Petals of the flower are kind of purplish red, and opposite is green. So we're actually going to be using what's that? Compliments. Compliments to the artist. Let's pick up some green. I'm going to put some brown on here. There's a lot of brown. Little dabs. You know what? Don't be afraid of the water, too. I think that's something that I, it took me a while, is that I thought, oh, my God, well, I can't get the paper all wet. Well... Yeah, <laughs> you can. That's the whole point of it. Because, it, I mean, the water will eventually go away. And if you don't like it, then you put more water on it or more color. But in the meantime, okay, so this, remember we talked about thirds? I kind of made this one leafy. 
this one leafy, and then I'm going to put my emphasis, my flower emphasis here in the summer. Summer. <laughs> the center. My goodness. I know where my mind is. Summer. <gasps> you know what else this reminds me of right here, this little color piece? Part of the joy of this is just seeing what happens. It's getting a little muddy because it's complimentary, right? That's when you put the green and the red together. It can make a little bit of a mud mess. I'm okay with that because I like the brown effect that it has. It also kind of looks like watermelon. Yay! Who doesn't love watermelon? Um, I have strawberries in my mom's freezer to make a strawberry dessert because I was in the mood for some summertime. see what happened can you hear those birds outside they are losing their mind I went out to go find some inspiration my little flowers and while I was out there I saw a bird nest in my rose bush from last year that I never got rid of or made the birds leave <laughs> the birds just left um, and I thought about bringing it in here. I thought, oh yeah, that would be kind of a cool inspiration. And then I realized if a bug flies out of that thing, Aunt Jenny will not be a happy camper. So I left it outside. I'm surprised there's not still some birds in it, but. Okay. Enough hemming and hawing on this one. <laughs> Look at this. One other thing you can do. If I have a straw here, probably not. Look, you can blow on it. I'm going to go grab a straw while this is drying. So take a second and talk amongst yourselves. You know what? I just realized that I went to get a plastic straw on Earth Day to use in an art project. Maybe that's the habit I need to break for today. But to make up for that, look who I brought. This is Shelby. Say hi, Shelby. Say I love art. I love art. Are you helping? You can. Shelby came to live with me. When I lived in South Carolina, she is not thrilled that I just picked her up out of her nap area. Alas, she's going to have to get over it. All right, while we wait for this other piece to dry. Sorry, like I said, I get things a little a little bit too wet. Ooh, you know what we do? Look at that, a whole, a whole other impact. I just blotted some off. We'll dry quicker that way. I'm going to experiment with these little uh, inks. This is, like I said, this is incredible ink. This one's called Fresh Air. This one's called Blueberry. And this one's called Mermaid Tail. Bring it on. Just put it on the paper. Gosh, look how dark that is. Add a little water to it. <gasps> look at that. Look at how bright that is. This is this is an India ink. It's got to be an India ink. That was one of the first things I started on when I was doing color, colory, colory things. Because they're just so bright. Look at that. I don't waste my time with these other watercolors. I need to get all inky. Alright, so speaking of, 
This is Jane Davenport. I've, I mentioned her before. She's got all kinds of classes online working with ink. Oh, stuff actually smells good too. But you don't buy ink just to sniff it, do you? So maybe we'll have to do a project with ink sometime. So here's why I brought the straw. Look at that. Cool little fire. You see that? Funky. Oh, that looks really interestingly organic. All right, save that for next time. Ugh. Okay, back to the doodles. The doodle bug that is known as our project for today. I, again, am using Micron. I like these, Micron Pigma. They're fine. Maybe I should use a fatter one so you can see me on TV. Let me see if I can find a, find a, here's a, here's a one. I think it's a one millimeter versus a 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. I'm gonna go back to the example. In this example, I'm going back to the chunk of paint and I'm just gonna start looking for shapes. There is not a science to this. Now we can always keep design principles in mind. However, that is not what this exercise is about. This exercise is inspiring you to breathe in and breathe calmly and have a little laugh. All right, so I'm gonna use this fatter one. Now, you wanna start with big shapes or small shapes? Guess what? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna start probably in a place that's not quite so wet. So I'm gonna start over here and do the outline of this. No, it's up to you how detailed you want to get. Do you really want to trace the edge? I like that because I think it looks kind of funky. Oh, all the little dots. <gasps> One line. And for that two seconds that I was working on that, I didn't really think about anything else. I thought about, I'm a little bit nervous always being on the, on the, the Google TV or whatever this is. But that's part of the, the mind engaging part. You've got to find a little line and trace it. So you can't be thinking about Oh, the vacation that just got canceled. Or your friends that are working really hard trying to make sure that their lives don't go totally cray. Or your crazy kids that are working on schoolwork. How's school, Bobs? Or the fact that you ate chili. Jess just reminded me is that the plastic wrap can give a fun effect. Maybe we'll do a special class on different effects because we I, I took a workshop with Kathy Taylor and we learned a ton of neat things in the plastic wrap, man. And wax paper makes it a little bit different. So you can dream about that. You know, if you have ideas for workshops, you can write them in the comments. You can... Send me an email. You could send Morgan an email. You could send Jess an email. Because the cool part about this is that we're all, I guess, working artists-ish. Like I said, but I'm not a professional. So I, I'm really a non-working artist. I'm really a napper who gets in the studio sometimes. But we have resources, oh my goodness, frankly, all over the country. If not mostly here in southwest of pennsylvania and if you so if you want to learn some we can probably find it we can figure it out we can make up a lesson we can teach you to sing we can teach you to dance now we're not trying to get all professional and stuff but again if there's something fun 
that your kids need to learn for school and you think, man, I don't know how to do that. I wonder if Jen and her friends do. Just ask us and we'll come up with something. Because we're coming up with content that we like. We can come up with content that you want or need too. There's all kinds of art classes too that I've been taking. How cute. Look at my cute little lines. It's so fuzzy. <laughs> Some people actually get inspired by going out and walking around a, a lake and exercising. I think that is fabulous too. However, you can also, how about if you just doodle around your lake? Huh? Don't I think I'm funny? All right, I'm tired of that section. So, because this is my piece and it is not perfect, I'm gonna find another spot. Look, I'm gonna go over here. That's the sound effect that goes with the little. There we go. Also, if you decide to sell your stuff to people, if you have sound effects with it, it makes it it makes it way more expensive. <laughs> Just kidding. Does this seem weird? Does it seem boring? I don't think so. The fact that I'm on a video just tracing pretty colors in honor of Earth Day and my friends and family staying home and working around the world, I think it's kind of cool. Of course it's making me hungry, so what should I have for a snack later? Hmm. That looks like a llama. Oh my gosh, this is like when you look at a cloud and you see the shapes. Because since we didn't really plan the shape, you get to just look in it and see what you see. So now, that right there, that's an alpaca head. Right there I even put some eyes. <laughs> Which, by the way, since it's a free-for-all, you can put dots and lines, you can put extra lines. Whatever, whatever. You're probably wondering, am I gonna make you watch me do this whole thing? No, I'm just here to get you started and get you comfortable with the That looks a little bit weird. That makes, that makes me think of Croatia. I think I might need a little more purple. Moving to another section. I'm going to go this to this archipelago. How do you say that? Archipelago? Group of islands? I'm thinking Hawaii, Alaska. They look like, oh, little molecules. But we're not gonna talk about that. So, last thing I'm going to do on this today, because I'm not going to make you just watch me draw. Watch me draw. Watch me nay-nay. So, last week we did some lettering. What would you think if we also incorporated lettering into this project? What? Is that just too much too soon? I personally do not think so. I am going to find 
a spot on here. I'm going to use this line right here. I don't know how to hopefully spell it right. I N S P I R. started at the beginning it's inspired inspired by what I don't know is that really important I think it's just because it's inspired but I could also put For those of you non-cursivers out there, that's about as cursive as I can get right there. How about making sure we write down the year? 2020. Ooh. Look at this over here. It really does look like a continent. It's interesting to see how long you can go without lifting up your pen. Also, do you feel bad when you don't follow directly on the lines? Sometimes I do. But, I got over that. Little giraffe head. Bubbles, there's bubbles over here. Yay. You know what I would really love? A bubble bath. Wouldn't that be fun? That would require me to actually be able to fit in my bathtub. <laughs> Someday when I grow up, I'll have a big house with a big bathtub. All right. I'm going to leave you to your own for the rest of this bad boy. But let's go back over just a couple things. One... Happy Earth Day. It's the 50th anniversary. And we want you to be a caring, amazing human being, which I know you are. We looked at analogous colors. Now I, I could probably write that down now. Analogous colors, those are colors on the color wheel that are next to each other. And so that's an example of what we did right here. We used greens, blues, and purples. We even went a little bit over kind of green, yellow. And we kept them all on the cool color side of the spectrum. Remember cool? These are cool color sides. Then we took a look at our piece inspired by these gorgeous dogwoods and we used some reds and pinks and some greens and yellows so in this case we used complementary because they're opposite on the color wheel 
And you can see, remember how I said, when you sometimes when you mix complementary, you get a little brown. That's where we got a little brown in there. But that's okay, because look at that nice brown in our branch. That's actually a good thing. We didn't get time to mark on this one at all. Heck, mine's still drying. That'll give me something to do later while I watch NCIS as though it's my job. Last but not least, the one concept that I introduced about composition is that rule of thirds. Again, whenever we talk about rules in art, they, they exist, but it doesn't mean that you are gonna go, you're gonna go to art jail if you don't do them. So when you think about threes, and you're thinking about where you're putting your design, this is just a little lesson. We could get more into that. I'll get one of my professional people to, to dig into that. Because otherwise, we could spend seven hours just on why this should be the focal point of your piece. Um, we'll also maybe work on a lesson with some inks, because those inks were really cool. And I would love to see your work when you get finished. You have to send it in, put it on the Facebook page, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're keeping it simple, sweetie. And this is for us. This is for us to relax, enjoy, have fun, especially the cat. She obviously loved, <laughs> loved that I drug her in here. And as much as it stresses me out sometimes to get on this thing, I realize that it's really fun. I don't know why. I, I need to do this more whenever I'm just hanging out in my house. So on that note... You guys are the best. Tune in tomorrow. Miss Linda is going to be working with polymer clay. If you have not done that before, it is one of the most unique art forms. Talk about using color. You can get crazy. Um, but you know, she's a fabulous teacher. And so she will be here on Facebook Live at Sam of Edford at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And tune in with me next Wednesday. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to be here next Wednesday whether they want me to or not, and we will have some fun. So this is Jenny coming at you live. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support of the Southern Allegheny Museum of Art online class program, and we will see you soon. Now, if you were with me last week, you know that turning the camera off is not my skill set. So much, much, much good luck and goodbye.